Hello everyone, I'm Big Fellow, and welcome to the second video of our top 10 or top unit series, because it could be top 5 as well. So there's a lot of things to talk about. I didn't want the intro to be too long, but there's a lot of things that we have to talk about. First of all, this bodyguard top 10 is separated. So we're only doing the foot soldier's bodyguard. Because with the calf it's difficult because you could charge in, charge out. So it's like it's difficult to determine which is actually more powerful. So the calf will be separate. And within the foot units of bodyguard, we are separating the archers as you could just fire, run away. So it would be also difficult to determine which is best. So we're only doing the melee units for bodyguard, which is this video here. And then in some video in the future, I will put the top 5 archer bodyguard and top 5 cavalry bodyguard, which will be together. That's one thing. A second thing, I am including a new thing into the list. You know, I will say like soldier, attack, charge, defense, special abilities, cost. But um, Hummingbird, which is one of the members of the Divide and Conquer modding team, told me that I could also explain the speed of the units. Now, with help from him, he showed me where to find these stats and uh, where they've written, written down everything. So now I have the speed. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration. So 100% speed, because they're in percentage, 100% speed is the normal speed. So the most of them are 100%. 95, which are mostly the dwarves, means they're 5% slower. And if they're 110, like for example elves, means they're 10% faster. So I didn't say that in the in the top 10 cavalry because I didn't know about it, but thanks to Hummingbird, we we can. So Hummingbird, if you're watching, thank you very much. And there's another thing. You'll find that a lot of orc bodyguards are higher than dwarves. And um, you might be confused by that, and I'll explain that in the outro. But for now... Um, Enjoy the list. At number 10, we have the Zenith Guard. This bodyguard comes from Khazad Doom. They have 39 soldiers, an attack of 10, a charge of 4, a defense of 34, and they cost 1,000 florins. And all bodyguards cost the same amount, so I might not even mention it. But I will, because that's how the list works. We have excellent stamina, and we have a locked morale, which means they'll never break. They're dwarves, what do you expect? And um, thanks to the new um, addition, we know the speed. The speed of the Dwarf, of Zenith Guard, is 95%, which means they're 5% slower, because it's out of 100, they're slower than the average, which is 100. At number 9, we have the Royal Guard. And these are not the Royal Guard of Rohan, these are the Royal Guard of the Dwarves. So this bodyguard comes from the Dwarves of Erebor and the Iron Hills, but they reduced the name to Erebor. They have 39 soldiers, a charge of 4, they're dwarves so their charge is nothing, but yeah. They have attack of 12 and a defense of 32. They also cost a thousand florins. They can make a shield wall as their special ability. They also have excellent stamina and they have locked morale because they're dwarves, they never break. And their speed is also 95% which means they're 5% slower than an average unit. At number 8, we have the Phallus Lords. This bodyguard comes from the Grey Havens of Linden. They have 31 soldiers, an attack of 15, a charge of 8, a 35 defense, and they also cost a thousand florins like everybody else. Now, elves have more abilities. They are adept at hiding in woods because they're elves, you know, they like to hide in the woods. They're skilled against mounts because they're spearmen. They have a powerful charge, because 8's charge is very high for spears. They have an excellent stamina and excellent morale. So they're not locked, because elves might run away, because, you know, elves. And elves have a hundred... well, this unit has a 110% speed, which means they're 10% faster than the average unit. At number 7, we have the Uruk Bodyguard. Now, I can hear you people saying, dude, how on earth are the orcs higher than dwarves and elves? It's a big explanation and I'll tell you in the outro of the video. So at the moment, I'm focusing on the list and then we'll tell you why the orcs are quite high. So the Uruk bodyguard come from Mordor, obviously, and Mirkwood. They're both from the same place. They have 78 soldiers, an attack of 9, 
A charge of three? Pathetic. But you say, why is it so high? You, you see, just wait to the outro. 18 defense and a thousand flower and cost, just like at every other unit. They are effective against armor. They have excellent stamina and a good morale. And their speed is 100%, which means it's the normal speed. So at number 6, we have the Angmar Bodyguards. Now this unit has 78 soldiers, an attack of 9, a charge of 3, just like the Uruks, and a defense of 22, because Angmar has high armor. They cost 1000 florins, and their special abilities are they have excellent stamina and good morale. And their speed, which was a surprise to me, is 98% which is an odd number, they're 2% slower than the average unit, and I guess that represents because they have a lot of armor and stuff like that. At number 5, and now you can stop worrying because this is the last orc one, we have the Urukai Bodyguards. This bodyguard comes from Isengard! We have 78 soldiers, an attack of 9, charge of 5, so we are improving, we have 24 defense, and like all bodyguards, a thousand flowering cost. We have excellent stamina and a good morale. And also their speed is like the Angmar bodyguards. They have 98%. I guess it reflects the armor and their swords and shields. And, you know, Urukaya beasts. At number four, we have the Naru and Aru household guard. I do apologize if I said the name wrong. Because somebody can give me a lesson if I said that wrong. So in this household guard, we're just going to call it down, we have 42 soldiers, an attack of 14, which is quite high for spearmen, a charge of 6, and a defense of 32. The cost, 1,000 florins. I don't even need to mention it, you already you guys know that. So they're skilled against mounts, they're spearmen, obviously. They're reliable in deserts because they come from Umba. I didn't say that, did they? Well, I'm telling you now, they come from, the, from Umba. They frighten enemy infantry which is the first time it appears. They have excellent stamina and excellent morale, and their speed is 100%, which is like the average unit. At number three, we have the Tumunzaha Nobos. This bodyguard comes from Eret Luin, the last dwarf that was missing. So we have 39 soldiers, an attack of 13, a charge of five, a 28 defense and a thousand for flowering, flowering, a thousand flowering cost, which I, I, I don't know why I'm even mentioning this, but I have to, it's the rules, we are, it's effective against armor, so it's the first dwarf that is actually effective against armor, which is why it's higher than the other dwarves, we have excellent stamina, and they locked morale, because the dwarves, who runs away, dwarves never run away, and their speed, like all the other dwarves, is 95%, which means they're 5% slower than regular soldiers, at the number two, we have Barlin's Guard. Yep, so the unique bodyguard for Barlin is at number two. We have 33 soldiers, an attack of eight, a charge of six, but a defense of 40. Wow, amazing. And actually, the Florence for this guy is 576. So I lied. When I said everything's a thousand, I was lying. Barlin is special. I don't know why. So the abilities of this unit are, they inspire nearby troops, they're effective against armor, they have excellent stamina and locked morale, which means they'll never run away. And let's be honest, Balin would never run away from anything. And just like all dwarves, they're 95% speed. One thing to note though, you will only ever get one Balin's guard in the whole game, because there's only one Balin. And finally, at the number one, we have the skin changers from the Veil vale of the Anduin. Now, I was surprised at this, and you probably are surprised too, for the skin changers to take the number one spot. So we have 32 soldiers, an attack of 24. It's quite high, eh? 24. It's actually very high. We have a charge of 9, and a defense of 17. Now, you might think 17 is very low to be in the top, like, number one. But... The skin changes, and the only one, they have two hit points. What that means, is means they have like two lives, basically. So 17 defense goes to 34 defense, because they have like double. So in reality, with the two hit points included, we have 34 defense. It costs 1,000 florins, like all other bodyguard. So the 
Um, our special abilities of this unit are they're adept at hiding in woods. They're from Anduin. Typical. Skilled against mounts because they're axemen, double handed axemen. They're effective against armor because of the axe. They fight in enemy enemy they fight in enemy infantry because you know they're bears and humans that can change between the both of them. They have a powerful charge and excellent morale, and their speed is 120%. So there you go, our top 10 bodyguard infantry list. So now I'm gonna address you about the orcs. And I do apologize if this outro is also long as like the intro. So the orcs are higher for a few reasons. The first factor is because of their numbers. Orcs have like 78 soldiers, 79 with a bodyguard. And I didn't mention this before, but all the bodyguards, they can take the numbers differently because each general might have a special ancillary and stuff like that, which makes them have bigger roster. So the numbers I've given you of the soldiers are the numbers you can get in the custom battles. So there'll be like, for example, from the top of my mind, Imrahil from Dolamroth, he has the those white, you know, the silver swan knights, whatever they're called. And you start with 16, but then they go to 32. It's like ancillary stuff. So the numbers are from the custom battles. So I know there's more and stuff like that, but blah, blah, blah. Back to the orcs. Orcs have numbers. So in my testing, I, I take everything. Numbers, attack, and attack, charge, defense. So in the orcs, they actually defeated these dwarves in my testing. So that's one of the reasons why they are up there. Well, basically that's the main reason, because they outnumber them and they flank them and stuff like that. Plus the Uruks, they had effective against armor, so cut, they cut down the dwarves and... But if the Uruk, well, the Orc bodyguards, they had the exact same stats. No, with the stats they already have, but the same number of troops as the dwarves had, then the dwarves obviously would win, but it's just the numbers is the main reason. And then there are some other few reasons, which doesn't, that's not worth explaining in this video. So now you know why the orcs are substantially higher than most dwarves and that elf unit. So let me know in the comments if you agree with me with this. I mean, it's opinion is opinion. I don't mind the opinions. I actually like debating. It's fun. I also want to thank you for a hundred subscribers. So this is the reason why this video has come out early. I said I'd do like maybe two videos a month because there's a lot of work to do, but I reached 100 subscribers and I want to thank you So by giving you this video early. I want to thank Arahir Galathion because it's because of him my views went high very quickly. So if you're watching, I want to thank you as well. And uh, yeah, so thank you for 100 subscribers. And um, do let me know if you want me to do it like a special video because I don't know anything about these milestone videos. So please let me know what top 10 list you want next because I was gonna do my own system by choosing my own units by time by time. But in the last video, you people gave me a lot of suggestions and stuff like that. So I, I want to get you involved. So in the comments, tell me what you want me to do next time and I'll do it as soon as possible. So thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.